Gloria Bell was born Gloria Bernadette Flickinger on June 9, 1939, to her parents Carol J. and Carolyn Myers Flickinger in Silver Run, Maryland. In the 1950s, she was 10, according to the census, right before her 11th birthday. Both of her parents worked as an orderly in a general hospital. That was her dad, and her mom was a maid. At this point, they lived in Penn, York County, Pennsylvania. They eventually moved to Hanover, Pennsylvania, where Gloria graduated from Hanover High School. She started her career early on and took her to Western North Carolina and East Tennessee around this time frame. She had her first public performance, which was at three, at a church radio program in Frederick, Maryland. When she reached her early teens, she played the piano, drums, banjo, guitar, and mandolin. At the age of 15, she had dropped out of high school, or dropped out of school for a little bit, um, started working different odd jobs just to pay the bills. This included a chip factory. Six years later, Cass Walker's farm and home radio show invited her to join the cast. The show was based in Knoxville, Tennessee until 1983. Her first professional gig was this. She visited uh, and got invited on the stage with her mom before joining the cast from what it se uh, seemed like. Cass Walker apparently could not say her last name, so he nicknamed her Gloria Bell, and it just stuck. She began the position on Cass Walker's show in September of 1960. In 1965, she played with Raymond Fairchild in Maggie Valley, North Carolina, in their Wild West-themed amusement park, Ghost Town in the Sky, along with other artists, including Panhandle Pete. This happened during the summer of 65, and that fall, she briefly worked with the McCormick Brothers at the Old Times Square Dances near Gallatin, Tennessee. The next year, she made regular appearances on the Wheeling Jamboree in West Virginia, performing with Betty Amos's all-girl band, before I go thir uh, further, <clears throat> I need to add that in 1958, she began working with Hanover, Pennsylvania-based Gary Epley and the Cheerful, Cheerful Valley Gang. In 1967, she was brought into the front of an all-male band, the Bluegrass Travelers from Frederick, Maryland. This took place... When the original lead singer died, Bill Berry was in a tragic car accident. I could not find information on him and the band, but only a few pictures, which are included in this video and others. Gloria changed their name to Gloria Bell and the Green Mountain Travelers. This was very short-lived. In 1969, she moved on from the group to be in... A sne uh, to be a sneer drum player with the Sunny Mountain Boys full-time. That didn't last long either, and the years uh, to come, she went from doing acoustic bass. Gloria performed with Jimmy Martin's Sunny Mountain Boys between the years of 1968 and 1975. She was a member of the band during that time. She also sung lead with Jimmy and high baritone on multiple recordings. She also played bass on those recordings, etc. In spring of 1972, she took a break from working from uh, with Martin and joined an all-female country dance band, the Nashville Kitty Cats, or Kit Cats, and other sources, in Richmond, Virginia. Another source... Calls them that. I tried to look them up and couldn't find much information on them. So, by 
August of 1972, she was back working with Martin. In 1973, she did this festival circuit with a musician named Charlie Monroe. In 1975, with Martin, she toured Japan. Martin jokingly said she's not very good, but we let her sing with us because we, uh, we feel sorry for her. I don't wonder how she felt about that, but could not find anything about her response to it. But they kept their friendship. I know that um, 1980, Bell returned to Knoxville and partnered with Danny Bailey again with the Cass Walker Show. She taped for them at least twice a week until it went off air uh, in 19, uh, 1983 of April. Gloria also worked with Bonnie Lou and Buster Moore, who are husband-wife team, in Pigeon Forge and filled the band in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. She played guitar and sang a group of name I didn't see my source. Um, Sorry about that. The group did um, conventions in the area. She played with the Bailey Brothers around this time, too. In 1982, she was in the World's Fair, Knoxville, Tennessee, and worked with a guitarist named Joy King at the Fair's Women's Week. Gloria eventually moved to South Florida. Um... From Knoxville, while in Florida, she formed an all-girl group called Fox Fire. Again, I didn't get much info on there. I looked them up, and it, there was a different group going by the same name now. Um, in 1989, Gloria Bell men, uh, married Mike Long of Mike Long Guitars. On September 23, 1989, his job title was called a guitar Luthier, or I think I did that wrong, um, which is a maker of stringed instruments such as a uh, violins, guitars. The term was originally used for makers of lutes, but it came to be used in French for makers of most bowed um, and pitch strings instruments, such as the members of the violin family, including violas, Celos, um, cello, excuse me, double basses and guitars. Uh, thank you coming for the class on instruments. <laughs> um, they married in Union Mills, Maryland. At this point, Gloria was living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, or it was when they were engaged. Mike apparently also worked for the Metro Water Service, uh, Services in Nashville around this time. Uh, he seemed to be a busy guy. Mike Long is the son of Allie Lee Long of Nashville, Tennessee, and of his late father, James N. Long. He graduated from West End High School in Nashville. He also went to the University of Tennessee and graduated with an associate's degree in civil engineering. He also did some entertainment in the country music genre. Mike and Gloria met while picking in the mid-1770s. The Reverend Lefus, it's L-I-F-U-S, R-I-F-F-E, and Earl Yeager were a part of their wedding, but recorded... Records doesn't say who officiated their wedding. Um, the reception seemed to be fun because it was mentioned in the newspaper that guests were entertained with bluegrass music and singing provided the bride and groom. After they tied a knot, they um, went back to Tennessee off of Brent Lawn Drive. Um, in 1990, both Gloria and Mike formed a band with two other men called Tennessee Sunshine. In 1999, Gloria Bell was presented with the dis uh, 
Distinguished Achievement Award by the International Bluegrass Music Association, or A I B M A for short. She became one of the few females to even earn that award. Her second IBA uh, MA award was in 2001 for Recorded Event of the Year for Follow Me Back to the Fold, a tribute to women in bluegrass. Gloria won another IBMA award in 2009. It was for her work with the Daughters of Bluegrass. Bluegrass. She received a Recorded Event of the Year award with this group uh, for Proud to Be a Daughter of of Bluegrass. She did an interview on May 25th, 2006 with Louis B. Nunn, Center for All History, University of Kentucky Libraries. It is on their website if you want to look it up. Uh, Sadly, in her later years, Gloria ended up with dementia and suffered suffered for many years between the first time and the last time i was there in tennessee in 2022 it was she was put in a nursing home um mike had a bad stroke some years back and couldn't talk uh right since then in 2023 um, after she was in the nursing home and before she died, um, he got put in the nursing home himself because he had an accident on the way to Hardy's. But um, he's still there. He's in a nursing home in Franklin, which is not far from Nashville. Um, he always went to Hardy's every morning. Unfortunately, he got an accident that one day and that was it. Um He's still doing good, live and kick in there. Um, so, uh, fortunately, um, for Gloria Bell, she died on May 5th of 2023. This is la- from last year. I recorded it in October of 2024. Um, October tw- uh, 14th. Um, I know she's going to be missed by everybody that knew her. Um, I know with my uncle and my aunt, they're definitely going to miss both of them. You know, they try to go see him when they could, uh, can, um, or they try to when when they first when they first found out he was in a nursing home. Um, they have health issues themselves, so they can't go and do as much and drive and get there. Um. Besides the point, um, so I'm going to list all my resources in the description box below. Make sure y'all, um, look at my resources, check them out, form your own opinion. So, <laughs> make sure, uh, so you know I'm not lying about the stuff I come up with. Um, I had to redo this whole uh, script last minute, um. Because of other information coming up. And I know on several sources online I've seen she was born in June. But um, the one thing I looked up just to make sure. um, I looked on Ancestry.com and it said her birthday was in July. Same day but different months. So, you know, I'm going with the most popular. But I should have just said she was born in July. But, um, so they have it. Um, I really hope you guys like this video. Uh, this is the first time recording with video and mouth like this. And I got to figure out how to smash it all together and make one good video. Um, I was trying not to make a too long video for y'all. Um, something maybe 15, 20 minutes which is around that time.